12 minus K. Welcome everyone. Good morning. Thanks for joining for our team call. Uh, if you don't have your camera on, I'm probably going to call you out and have you turn it on just because we have so many uh, new faces <laughs> and, and I would like everybody to be able to see and meet one another. Um, thanks, Ben. <laughs> um, I think Connor is the only one that probably doesn't have a, a video. But there's Samantha. Thanks, Samantha. Jason, do you have video? Oh, there's Jason. All right. <laughs> Tina, is Joy on with us this morning or not? No, okay, that's fine. All right, well, good morning, everyone again. Um, just wanna start us off by doing a quick round of introductions um, so that the new faces can um, kind of meet everybody and the old faces can uh, meet the new faces. So everybody knows myself, Mandy Hirsch, um, Stage Capacity Team kind of like lead. Um, I'm based in Lander, Wyoming. So why don't everybody just kind of give a round of introductions, I'll call on you as we go, say your name, um, location, and maybe your title, and how long you've been um, with the uh, partners to insert Sagebrush Rangeland effort. So on our team here, we have, um, Tina, you wanna go and introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm the old face of the old face. I'm Tina Dennison, and I think I know, <laughs> I, know <laughs> I know all of you, um, except Ben, it's nice to meet you. Um, I'm located here in Missoula with IWJV, the um, project coordinator. And I've been, I've been with uh, help for the partners in the SAGE, but been with IWJV for 10 years. Tina keeps us all on track and keeps us moving. <laughs> and so uh, the other person that's from our team that's joining the call today is Mariah. And so Mariah, I'll let you introduce yourself and tell them a little bit about kind of um, how you're affiliated with us right now. Yeah, so I'm Mariah McIntosh. Um, I am the technical transfer specialist for IWJV. I've been working with these guys for about a year now. Um, and so I'm also a Missoula. Um, and I'm also a PhD candidate at the University of Montana. Um, but with the IWJV, my work focuses on sort of thinking about how we can get information um, from wherever it is that information lives to improving and informing impacts on the ground. And so um, just a sort of brief snapshot of some of the projects I'm working on um, that you guys will hear more about in the future is um, recently I've done an assessment of sort of carbon sequestration. What do we know? How does it relate to the things that we do? Should we be thinking about it? Um, and I'm, I've also been working on a resource list that um, compiles a lot of resources as well as peer reviewed literature relating to the topics or sort of the buckets as we call them for um, partnering to conserve stage fresh rangelands. So that's a quick snapshot of what I've been working on. Thanks, Mariah. So, for those of you that have not um, like attended one of these before, it's really meant to be informal. We just want you to get to know us and for you to get to know your team members that are scattered across the West. So first we'll do our, um, I'll just call on you guys. You can uh, kind of do the same thing that we just did. So the first person on my screen is Kathy. Hi, I am Kathy McKim. I am uh, with um, IWJV as well as some other partners. I'm a coordinating wildlife biologist for the um, Wildlife Corridor in New Mexico. I am based out of Northwest New Mexico and I have been with IWJV since January. And I'm still learning. So I'm not too sure exactly what you would say um, the buckets are. That's great. But, yeah. That's all right. So Kathy is the newest member of our team to join us. Um, so yeah, welcome, Kathy. Meet all these awesome people. Um, you'll get to know them a little bit better as we go uh, throughout today. Uh, Julie, you're next on my screen. I have a lot of mutes to uh, undo. 
Um, I'm Julie. I'm Freed. I'm based in uh, Burns, Oregon, and I am um, a coordinator for some collaborative groups here focused on sage grouse. They're called um, local implementation teams. Thanks, Julie. Uh, Sean, you're next. Hi, I'm Sean Claffey. I live in Dillon, Montana, so southwest Montana. I am the conservation coordinator for the Southwest Montana Sagebrush Partnership. Uh, I came on, I think, officially in June of 2018. So I, I guess that makes me an old face. <laughs> uh, Amy, you're next. Good morning, everyone. I'm Amy Sergel, and I'm based in Bishop, California, and I'm working as the Bi-State Sage Grouse Data and Communications Coordinator. And I've been in my position for coming up on three years. Thanks, Amy. Ben, you're next. Hello, my name is Ben Weston. I am the Rich County Soil Conservation District Planner, kind of a partnership position with the NRCS and uh, conservation districts in Utah. And I just started in November. So kind of, I live in Lake Town. I'm at my house today because I figured I was going to be on Zoom calls all day. I might as well just hang out around here and, uh, but usually go to the office in Randolph a lot of days. So just here and happy to help. Thanks, Ben. Awesome. So just so everybody knows, Ben's position is also one of the newest ones with Kathy's. And Ben's position is the first that we're trying where our state's Sagebrush Partnership is partnering with our kind of sister partnership within IWJV, the Water 4 initiative. And so Sagebrush and Water 4 um, dollars went to create uh, Ben's position to kind of help um, see how this could work across the West as far as bringing on board Water 4 and Sagebrush because you all kind of work on some of the same things. So Ben is the first prototype that we're trying out with this. So, all right, the next uh, is Samantha. Good morning, I am Samantha Lang and I am the Range and Wildlife Conservationist with Pheasants Forever based in Burley, Idaho. And I have been in this position also since November. Thanks, Samantha. So just to recap, uh, Connor, right, used to be in Samantha's position. And so Connor's moved uh, to the Bosch position and Samantha is now there running the show in Burley for us. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Jason, you're next. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Jason Levan, I'm in Lander, Wyoming. Um, a partner biologist with NRCS, um, hosted through Pheasants Forever. Um, approaching about a year. I guess I just started last June, so getting close to that one year mark, so. Thanks, Jason. Uh, let's see, who's next? Uh, Janine, you are next on my screen. Hi everyone, I'm Janine Little. I'm based in Susanville, California, and I am the Buffalo Skedaddle Sage Grouse Working Group Coordinator here. And I started um, at the end of July last year. Thanks, Janine. Caitlin. You're up next. There it is. Uh, hi, I'm Caitlin. I am a coordinating wildlife ecologist for the Mule Deer Migration Corridor uh, on the Arizona Strip. Uh, so I partner with BLM and uh, Arizona Game and Fish and I'm hosted through Pheasants Forever and I'm based out of St. George, Utah. Thanks, Caitlin. Let's see, Brenda, you are up next. Good morning, everybody. My name is Brenda Richards and I am the coordinator for the Idaho Rangeland Conservation Partnership. And uh, we, I'm two and a half years into it, I guess. So um, we are put together to help work on rangeland issues, both socially, uh, economically, ecologically, and bring partners together um, for collaboration. Um, help facilitate conversation and uh, work to get that conservation on the ground. Thanks, Brenda. 
Catelyn, you're up next on my screen. Okay, uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Catelyn Uhart outside of Carson City, Nevada. I am the um, coordinator for the Results Oriented uh, Grazing for Ecological Resilience or ROGER group. Um, and no, there's nobody in the group named ROGER. That is a common question that we get asked. Um, but yeah, and I have been um, on board since, I guess, September. So happy to be here this morning. Thank you, Catelyn. And then last but not least, I think, Connor, are you on just, you have no camera? Yeah, that's correct. I would say, yeah, best for last, but with this group, that's, that's pretty tough to even try to claim that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Connor White. I'm the BOSS project coordinator here in Boise, um, hosted out of a BLM office, a district office here, but yeah, I work with Pheasants Forever as the hosting entity. Um, I was trying to think, I've been with PF for six years, but I was trying to think, Mandy, when you started throwing, uh, partnering to conserve sagebrush rangelands dollars at the Burley position, I don't really recall when I officially joined the S sage capacity team. Uh, you were probably one of the originals, Connor, because IWJV Partners in the Sage was throwing it in like 2016. Nice. With myself. Yeah, he was around in the beginning. Mm -hmm. We're the two oldies. <laughs> Thanks, Connor. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So I just wanted to give you all um, a chance to introduce yourselves, um, kind of meet all the new faces because our team really has grown from about six um, to I think now we're up to 15 uh, positions. So just wanted you all to kind of get to know each other real quick. I'm going to just go over a few quick um, updates on my end, and then I'm going to turn it over uh, to you all to give us just kind of a just a three to five minute kind of update, things you're working on, um, challenges that you're encountering. Um, you'll get to know that this team's really good about being a kind of a problem solver for you guys and just to uh, help you guys connect on the ground with what's going on. Um, so just want to give you some general updates on our end. Uh, as far as new positions go, I wanted to let you guys know that you probably saw that the outcome-based grazing um, authorization coordinator position flew uh, last Friday. And so that will fly through the end of this month, um, May 28th. We're really looking for someone to take the outcome-based grazing um, effort uh, for the BLM and the partners and really ramp it up and integrate it further within BLM. And so, if you know of anyone that kind of fits some of our main criteria, we're looking for someone that has a really close tie with rangeland health, understands resources, uh, that type of stuff, has a close connection or experience with uh, the ranching industry. We need somebody that understands the economics as well as the lifestyle so that then they can help BLM integrate, right, outcome-based grazing um, within their own structure. And then the third thing is, uh, we're going to be looking for someone that probably has a little bit of BLM experience. They, we need somebody that understands, you know, how their planning goes, their policy, um, et cetera. So those th three things are kind of our criteria that we're looking for to really help us uh, ramp up that um, OBJ effort. So if you know of anyone, please continue to distribute um, the position description um, as we go forward. Because like I said, it will uh, fly until May 28th. Um, before I get to this slide that I have on my screen, two new positions um, that we're currently working on. Just want to give you guys a little update. We're working on um, a habitat planning coordinator for Northwest Colorado. That position will probably be based in Grand Junction, Colorado. And we're hoping to have that one kind of up and going on the ground um, by, I'd say, sometime this fall. And then the second one is um, hopefully going to potentially be Julie's. Uh, counterpart for um, is it Lake and Burns LIT, Julie, correct? Anyways, there, it's going to be uh, Julie's counterpart over there. And so the same thing, um, hopefully this position will be up and going this coming fall. So just want to give you guys kind of an update. Our team will continue to grow over the next few months. So I will um, keep you guys posted on that. I uh, just wanted to give you guys just kind of a little bit of update. Here's what we're going to call our places and faces of our team members here. 
Um, we'll continue to kind of update this, but we created it for our annual report just so that you're, you know, you guys can distribute it to your BLM partners, other partners, just so that they can understand that you guys are real people and rock stars out there on the landscape and just not these names that we kind of throw out every now and then. Uh, and also we worked with um, a spatial ecologist from the University of Montana and created these maps that are also, um, I'll get, we'll throw our link in there too, but just a map that shows kind of like where all of your positions are located. And remember I pestered you guys to send me your shape files um, of kind of like the areas that you work. And so you'll see on the screen that the darker kind of brown is the shape files that you guys sent me of where the areas that you impact are. Um, and so as you can see, we have a lot going on in, <laughs> in Nevada. Um, and so this will help us kind of like prioritize in the future as far as like where we maybe should spend some of our dollars and our efforts to help our partners on the ground. So like I said, you'll see another dot um, be added over there in Colorado for that position and hopefully another one up there in Oregon uh, next to Dewey. So you guys are the stars on the maps and then the outcome-based grazing pilot projects. So the, ran the 11 ranches that were included um, in the OBGA, those are the dots on the map. So feel free to use both of these resources to kind of help explain, you know, who your team is, where we're located across the West um, and yeah, distribute it. Um, yeah, as you need. Uh, I wanted to also give you a sneak peek that uh, Hannah and our communication shop is always right doing like really interesting fun things and so uh, she redeveloped our story map on our partners in the sage webpage and so uh, though there's two tabs there's a, the sage capacity team so there's a map um, that's on the top map and so that shows where each of your positions are located and we tagged a picture of you um, so the partners can go on there and kind of see additionally where you're located. So that's an interactive map. And then the second part of that interactive map is the partnerships and projects. And so you can kind of see um, that map shows, you know, the Western United States, and then we have these numbers flagged. And so each of those numbers has a partnership story attached to it. Um, so that's also interactive. So that'll be up and coming in the next, um, I'd say, week or two. Hannah's just putting the final touches on it. And then I will let you guys know um, when that's updated so you can also share that with your partners. And then you all saw that I sent you uh, an email talking about our uh, 2020 annual report. So that is finished. If you haven't had a chance, take a look. Um, the they're both posted on our webpage. Um, so under Partners in the Sage, you go to um, Annual Reports and you can pull down um, both the long version annual report and then the glossy um, executive short version. Uh, I think Tina is also putting all these links in the chat. So thank you, Tina. Um, so yeah, if you guys haven't, take a look at those. Um, our team did a great job. We really wanted to kind of stand up and highlight all the work that you guys are doing across the West. And so please distribute these um, to your partners as well. It really helps show them all the funding that they're helping leverage through your positions, getting all the work on the ground. And another update I just wanted to um, show you guys is again, communications shop is always putting all this fun stuff together, but um, we have a few resources on our IWJV page um, and these are, these resources are what we're calling our uh, boldly stepping up to the conservation challenge. And so this is kind of centering around where this new administration is taking us as far as, you know, looking at 30 by 30 climate change. And so we put all these uh, resources together to kind of help shape what our IWJV partners in the SAGE and Water4, um, I'd say like views are and where we're hoping to take our work in the future. So we're really, um, are focusing these on, you know, working with our partners to find ways to champion our landscape scale, um, you know, voluntary conservation actions on the ground. So these are great resources if you um, are meeting with partners. There's the water for and sagebrush map that I was talking about just a minute ago on my slide. So feel free to check out all these cool resources as well. A lot of new stuff, Mandy. Pretty cool. 
<laughs> Thanks, Sean. Yeah, we've been working really hard to, um, you know, kind of continue forward and not get kind of stuck in, you know, stuck in a rut or anything. And so we're hoping to, hoping that these resources you guys do find useful and you can use them. So please, we love your guys' feedback. If there's something, um, you know, that you think needs to be updated or changed or have an idea, please let us know. Um, so the one, one other thing that I, yeah. Um, I was just going to ask, have you, ahead, Julie. have you shared the 2020 report with our BLM folks or should we do that? Yes. That's, yeah, that's a great question, Julie. So I shared them with your hosting entity and your like direct BLM, I'd say like contacts. Um, so Julie, feel free to distribute it again to, I sent it for you, I sent it to Kelly and Glenn. Um, hoping that they would share it with their other BLM counterparts, but please do send them to your more local partners if I did not meet. Yeah, did okay, not send them. thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if anybody's wondering who I send them to as far as your positions go, please uh, email me. But um, I just took basically what you all have told me as your kind of direct BLM contact. But like I said, feel free to distribute them far and wide because uh, the more BLM folks that know about it, that just kind of helps us tell your story and spread our partnership too. Any other questions before I continue on? I think I have two more slides. I think I'd, I'd just share that some of All these right. resources on your website have been great for me um, because we don't have a website for the partnership I work for and through, but. Mm -hmm. uh, Depending on the audience, I, these these are great to just kind of help describe big picture overview of what the heck I am and where I fit into everything. So um, thank you. And just wanted to say that other folks, if they haven't used it or shared these resources with uh, various partners, it's it can be worthwhile. Thanks, Sean. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so like Sean said, I guess for the new folks on the line, you know, lots of you won't have your own specific web page, so please do use us, right? Uh, we're working currently with, say, Catlin and the Roger Group um, to kind of uphold that partnership, and so we're posting a whole bunch of stories, and we'll be featuring a story about Roger on our website. So yeah, please um, let us be helpful for your partnership, because I know some of you don't have your own web pages. So I just wanted to quickly touch base. Uh, you guys met Mariah. She is awesome. Um, she's really helping our team kind of uh, move forward in the whole tech transfer arena. And so, so far um, over the past few months, we've kind of we've met as a smaller team, both for like IWJV and then with our BLM partners. And so we're really trying to hone in on one, where IWJV and our partnering to serve Sagebrush Rangelands, where we all fit in this whole tech transfer arena. And then um, I wanted to add your faces to this little puzzle piece because just kind of a sneak peek. I think that in moving forward, you guys are gonna be very key and you guys will basically probably become the puzzle piece and we will help to basically put that puzzle piece in the puzzle. Um, because I think that you guys having, you know, your positions connected to the communities, the local BLM offices and your partners you guys will truly be the ones that will help us take, like Mariah was saying, these tools or literature um, and like be able to help integrate them within, um, you know, your local planning efforts um, and partnership tasks. So just know that we're working pretty extensively on our whole tech transfer effort. We will um, have more to come once we kind of flesh out our um, what we're calling kind of some diagrams that are helping us think through this and we'll love to share them with you guys so that you guys can start helping us kind of uh, hone in our skills a little bit more with tech transfer. So just like today um, in the afternoon for the wrap session, this is going to be kind of like our first trial, right? So we're going to basically immerse you guys as much as we can uh, to wrap and, you know, give you these awesome contacts. Um, Eric, who's the new outreach coordinator for wrap, we're going to give you basically him as a resource to help you guys take RAP and further integrate it and teach your partners, you know, within each of your areas, um, you know, what RAP is, if they don't know it, how to use it, and understand that it's, you know, just a tool in your toolbox um, to really help move your efforts forward. So this is like the first part of we're just going to see how this works. Um, we're going to 
really probably reach out after the afternoon session in a few weeks and see, you know, if you really, if it was useful um, and kind of gain some more insight from you all before we continue down this path. But just know you guys are going to be these little puzzle pieces um, in the whole puzzle because I think you guys are going to be key to this whole tech transfer effort. And then um, last, but for sure not least, uh, you met Ben. Like I said, Ben is our first kind of water for sagebrush meshed um, position. And so just wanted to kind of throw it out there that um, Joy, who is the water for coordinator, her and I are working extensively um, to kind of think through more broadly how we can more integrate our sagebrush and our water for efforts. Um, you all obviously work on this large landscape view. And so we're just thinking through, you know, moving forward, how we can more support um, your positions um, and our own initiatives by kind of merging the two together. So just know that we're working on that. We'll probably be reaching out to several of you to kind of get your ideas and thoughts on this. And with that, I am all done with my main updates. Um, any other questions before we kind of move into the next 45 minutes to an hour hearing from you all? Anybody want to add any just main <laughs> topics? Tina, Mariah, did I forget anything? No, you covered everything uh, quite well. I'll just go ahead and post. Um, I'm sure you've all seen the, the new um, Conserving and Restoring America the Beautiful. Uh, Brenda's gonna be on a panel later this afternoon. So um, I'll go ahead and post that report in the chat. Yeah. Uh, so Maddie, I, I have a quick question. Um, I'm really excited yeah. to hear about um, Mariah's position and like the carbon sequestration and the gathering of science, mm -hmm. you know, documents, that type of thing and being able to have a place because that was one of the things that um, for IRCP that we've talked about, but when you're one person, it's, it's really hard um, to get all of that information and, and kind of have those conversations. So is, is that something that we'll be um, collecting information as it moves along? that we can link like on my website under our resources. You guys have great, the tools, you know, tab, but would we be able mm -hmm. to build off of that um, to go to a place where that information would be housed so that we're all not trying to recreate the wheel and make a housing entity. I think that's a perfect fit for Partners in the Sage because mm -hmm. we're all looking at the same information um, rather than having it on six different right. websites. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Raya, do you want to answer Brenda? And then I, I can add in if you'd like. Yeah. Um, so we will have some updates on those speci two specific sort of products in the next couple weeks. Um, but sort of this idea of this resource list is that we like to have um, basically just a list of both resources and um, peer-reviewed publications that it's not an exhaustive list but it's sort of like what we think is the most relevant um, that's available for you all and um, I think we do anticipate that that will be available on our website um, but if you if you or anyone mm -hmm. else has any sort of um, comments on that we'll we will provide an opportunity for feedback on sort of the original versions of that um we would love to hear more about sort of the types of resources um that are useful for you and how we can help support that thanks mariah so brenda yeah this is a very we're actually kind of exploring this within iwjb like what it looks like for us, we won't ever like house like raw data, right? But when you come to like resource lists, yes, we definitely fit that niche. And so um, I'm not very much like <laughs> a web developer whiz, but Mariah is. And so she's come up with a great idea of how we can house this, um, you know, potentially like on our website um, through, I'm gonna like completely mess this up, but like through like say like a URL. So where it would be where you could go in, you know, you could kind of search um, for like a tool or a publication um, and you know, it'd just be kind of a little bit interactive that way. 
Um, yeah, so definitely stay tuned. We will be sending, we'll, so when Mariah and I get the resource list complete, our next step is going to send it out to you guys um, not for distribution to your partners, but just so you can, you know, look at it. Like Mariah has said, give us some feedback. If there are tools or additional resources that you think we should add to it or comments, please let us know. So know that that will probably be coming to you guys the end of June, first part of July. Yeah, and um, in terms of like specifically this carbon sequestration report, um, that is more sort of the format of like um, a longer document summarizing research, but it also includes kind of like a short version of like, okay, what are the main takeaways? Maybe in these areas, it's not really relevant, so we can kind of forget about that, but here's where we should really be focusing. And um, I'm not sure if we'll work on sort of a similar product for other topics, but if that does end up being helpful, um, I think that's something that we could discuss for future projects as well. Yeah, I really think I've um, just reviewed the first draft that Mariah put together, and I really think for this team, um, the carbon lit review will be very beneficial. I mean, right, like when you think of carbon sequestration and what's going on and like if it fits, like what we can all do within, you know, the sagebrush biome. Um, to me, it was very overwhelming to know like even where to start. And so for this team, I think that um, her report will kind of help you put it into context a little bit of, you know, just how rangelands kind of fit into that whole picture, what we can all do within our daily, um, I'd say like practices, right, that can really uh, assist with that, um, really help me kind of like, I'll get a little bit better vision of it in my little head. So that'll be coming as well. Okay, so, um, oh, sorry, two other really quick um, updates, just so you all are aware. We'll be enter so IWJB will be entering into our second interagency agreement um, with the BLM. So the first interagency agreement is going to be sunsetting um, June 30th, I believe. And then we'll be kind of shifting gears and going into our second interagency agreement. That does not affect any of your positions. I just wanted to let you know that the BLM still very on board, still very much excited, very supportive of all your positions. And so that means that we're just basically entering into our next five year agreement. Um, we have additional funding that's gonna be, you know, trickled down through all of our buckets. So tech transfer, um, communications, field delivery capacity to help continue to support our partners in the SAGE efforts. So that will be happening this summer. It'll be a seamless transition for you all, but just know that that's taking place. Um, and then as far as I just, uh, COVID update, uh, obviously we're still all on Zoom <laughs> for heaven's sake. Um, I don't know, Tina and I are hopefully going to start. I mean, I'm sure you guys are seeing, you know, restrictions are lessening people. Uh, if they wanna be vaccinated, they are being able to get vaccinated. And so Tina and I really truly are hoping that we will probably have like our fall, early fall, late summer team meeting via Zoom still. But then we are truly hoping to pull this whole team together for our fall winter um, Sagebrush Collaborative Forum, hopefully in person, yeah, later this year. So maybe just a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Um, for IWJV, we may, are gonna try to start doing a little bit of traveling um, here later this summer. So yeah, we'll just um, stay tuned and yeah, stay safe and healthy still. <laughs> so uh, those are all my updates. I'm gonna stop uh, talking so you guys can all kind of get to know each other a little bit better. Um, I think just for these updates, um, maybe I'll call on some of those folks that have been around a little bit longer so that the new folks can kind of see what you provide us with. This is just uh, an opportunity for you guys to kind of share with the group things that you're working on. Um, kind of exciting updates, even like challenges. We've kind of, uh, you know, brainstormed through some ideas of people running into some challenges. And then just an opportunity for you guys to connect. And then if you need to uh, talk to someone later, if you want to touch base with them, now you know them and you can do that. So um, I'll go through and call on a few uh, of, the, of the older faces, quote unquote older, uh, of the group. And that way you guys can kind of see what, um, yeah, what they have going on. So let's see. 
Sean, you're on my screen. <laughs> you want to give us a quick update on, I mean, you got a lot going on up sure. there. Well, I'll, uh, won't take too much time. Um, yeah, hi again to the new faces. Uh, I guess just real quickly, just so you summarize my role up here. I, my title is conservation coordinator. I'm very heavy on the projects, um, I guess more than, um, I, well, that's a lot of what I do, I guess. Uh, communications internally amongst the partners and also I try to help facilitate external communications about our work, you know, together. Um, I also try to facilitate and connect um, some science research and monitoring uh, to, to support our work. Uh, but again, projects is a big part of what I do and those projects for the last three years have really focused on conifer expansion removal and wet meadow restoration work. Um, we also identified uh, wildlife corridors or, or barriers to court, uh, movement such as fences as one of our threats and also cheatgrass is one of our threats. I have not hardly had a chance to touch the cheatgrass subject and we're pretty lucky up here. We, it's not as bad um, as some of these other places in the Great Basin. We're pretty, pretty wet and pretty cold up here. So it's here, but it's not as crazy. And uh, actually pretty cool, the National Wildlife Federation uh, through a grant with NIFWIF just hired a fence coordinator to help uh, facilitate and coordinate uh, fence modification and removal up here in the high divide of Montana. So that kind of takes that workload of somewhat off of me directly and helps partners get more done there. And that position was based on and funded um, based on the, the, on the model we've built through this collaborative through the partners in the SAGE. So it's pretty cool to see other folks taking on these, these types of positions. Um, so I guess for me, I'll just share, I, I manage, uh, we're going through modifications and managing agreements with the Forest Service and BLM. Um, something really cool in the conifer removal world, we just received a grant from the DNRC, the Montana DNRC, uh, the Forest Action Plan uh, was just put together last fall. And as part of that, they provided a funding opportunity for folks to push more uh, forestry related work. And as the Sagebrush Partnership, we submitted for about 458, yeah, 458,000 to do more conifer removal work. I kind of pitched it as proactive um, wooey work. And uh, as part of this project also, we're gonna do some commercial harvest of phase three conifer expansion, phase three Douglas fir. We have a lot of Doug fir expansion up here. So we're gonna try to get that out of the hills into, uh, into what we're gonna try to spark a sort yard, start a sort yard up and try to just keep pushing for utilization of this material and hopefully create um, some sort of market for it and help it pay for itself moving forward. Um, that's pretty exciting stuff. Um, let's see, we also, this spring, I'm not sure since we talked last, we're successful with the Rocky Mountain Rangelands Award from National Fish and Wildlife Foundation. So we're gonna ramp up our work in uh, perennial streams using low tech uh, restoration techniques up here. Um, also, working on getting a threat based map, a lot of similar to what you guys have in Oregon, I believe, uh, Julie. Uh, Open Range Consulting is putting it together for us. It's a, to identify cheatgrass at a higher resolution here spatially. So it's a 10 meter resolution map on uh, identifying cheatgrass in the high divide. Um, so I kind of teamed up with Fish and Wildlife Service and pitched in some money to get our whole area. Uh, mapped for us. So that'd be a handy tool. Um, yeah, I don't know if anybody has any questions or Mandy, if I missed something I, you'd like to hear more about, I'd, I'll stop talking for now. No, that's great, Sean. Uh, just one other thing maybe to add in that um, Sean and I worked with uh, BLM Montana to actually acquire funding for um, a second position that would be under Sean. So to really help him uh, kind of take on some of the um, workload up there. So Sean and I are currently working to get that um, a hosting entity chosen for that person. Um, and then, yeah, we'll have Sean one and Sean two up there in Southwestern Montana. So that will be coming. Thanks, Sean. Awesome. Yeah, thank you, Mandy. And one more thing I'll throw out there. We have a number of uh, National Fish and Wildlife Foundation grants. Uh, um, 
working on wet meadow restoration work and uh, kind of a call for help here a little bit too. If anybody has any ideas for big sources of non-federal match, uh, please uh, let me know. Um, we, we have a lot to make up on. So that's it. Yeah, please do reach out to Shum. They have a huge, huge undertaking up there with miles and miles <laughs> um, of wet meadow restoration, you know, uh, treatments plans. So yeah, if you guys have any ideas uh, on that match, yeah, please let Sean know. That would help him out a lot. Let's see, Amy, do you want to go? Let us know what's going on over there in the bi-state. Sure, and I guess just for the new folks, just a quick overview of what I do. Um, I basically was hired to facilitate the conservation efforts of the Bi-State Local Area Working Group, who's been working for about 20 years now to um, conserve sage-grouse populations in their habitat in the Bi-State area along the California-Nevada border. So I guess what I've been up to lately, um, we just finished LEC monitoring for the spring season on both the California and Nevada side. So there's been lots of early mornings lately, but we just wrapped up. And um, we are gearing up for our first log meeting in almost two years. Uh, we haven't had one in person because of COVID and there was some hesitancy to have one online, but we're gonna go ahead and have a virtual meeting just because it's been so long since we've met. So the group's coming together in June. And we're also, we've been working in July, there's gonna be a traditional ecological knowledge summit um, here in the Bi-State, there is a group, a tribal organization called the Bi-State Tribal Natural Resource Committee, and they are planning their tech summit. And it's kind of a way for tribal members to communicate um, traditional ecological knowledge and, and ways to um, conserve and manage the land through their methods to federal partners. So that'll be a three-day summit coming up in July. And it's three days, two virtual days, and then there'll actually be an in-person field trip um, they had one of these meetings in 2016, and it was really successful in kind of bringing tribal partners and land management agencies together. So um, I've been working with the BTNRC to help plan that upcoming summit, and I think it's going to be really great. Um, I'm finishing up our 2020 accomplishment report, kind of summarizing all the conservation and monitoring actions that happened last year. And I've been working with a bunch of different partners to coordinate all the habitat restoration work that's gonna happen um, this summer, everything from conifer treatment, weed treatment, uh, wet meadow restoration, um, kind of a variety of projects. And I've also been doing some education and outreach through communication pieces and online presentations and uh, even have an in-person presentation coming up in a couple of weeks. So, and then, I guess one final update, maybe some of you guys know this, you know, last year, the US Fish and Wildlife Service decided not to list by state sage grouse as threatened under the Endangered Species Act. And that, that decision was challenged. So I've also been working with US Fish and Wildlife to um, kind of update the science and document everything that's been happening on the ground to um, support whatever's gonna happen when it goes back into the courts this year. And I think that's about it. Thanks, Amy. A lot going on in the bi-state. Yeah. You'll have to keep uh, this group posted on your um, on the summit and just let us know uh, when it is and if, um, yeah, we can join the virtual portion of it. Yeah, I think- Or if it's um, gonna be recorded. Yeah, they've. it's been a little bit tricky. It sounds like um, the Secretary of the Interior, Deb, Ho Deb Holland is gonna come. So there's the, mm -hmm. the planning has been a little bit up in the air, depending on whether or not she accepts the invitation or not. So they haven't fully decided how many mm -hmm. people can register. But as soon as I know, I'll let you guys all know if there's a chance to attend the virtual portion. Awesome. Thank you, Amy. All right, let's see. Let's travel um, up to Oregon and see what's going on with Julie and the LITs up there. Sounds good. Um, yeah, so again, I am a coordinator for a couple of collaborative groups um, here in Oregon, um, similar to maybe similar to the group that Amy um, coordinates. Our groups here are called local implementation teams, and um, there's actually five of them 
that have been established um, in Oregon, and I oversee two of them, um, and they're they're each about two hours in either direction, um, east and west from where I am. Um, and so one of the things that we've been working on here um, is trying to get capacity for, like Mandy said, for another coordinator to oversee um, the Burns and Lakeview teams, which would which would give us capacity for all five of our teams because we've got another coordinator um, for our Baker team. And so we just, um, we did just secure about 25% of the funding that we need um, to hire a three-year position. Um, and so now I'm working with Mandy and the BLM folks here in Oregon um, to try and secure the rest of the funding for um, through, through the same partnership, this IWJV BLM partnership. So um, that's been a lot of interacting with all the various local partners here to make sure that we kind of develop the position description in a way that fits those local community needs. Um, so that's, that's a little bit, I guess, um, outside of the scope of my normal job. Um, and so then I, the teams that I oversee, I, I see this one, oversee this one group called the Plex, the Prineville group, and then another one called the Vale group. And um, Prineville is, has been pretty busy. Um, we've got quite a few partners involved in that group. Um, the state Fish and Wildlife Department, um, a lot of several nonprofit organizations, BLM, Forest Service, um, all sorts of different interest groups there. And those those folks have been um, working really hard on developing um, what we call a threats reduction plan. So essentially what that is, is it's going to be a big report that identifies all of the issues in our local area um, that relate to sage grouse populations and sage grouse habitat um, and basically just list out everything so that we can have that all in one place and then um, start applying for funding and um, resources in a really strategic way. So at some point we hope to apply for, there's a big funding program here in Oregon that's, um, uh, it uses lottery dollars and to um, and you can apply for this program um, for all sorts of different conservation needs. And so we'll probably apply for that type of funding. Um, and then we also will probably apply for like RCPP funding. So a lot of the work that I do here in Oregon is really about like developing partnerships and um, writing large plans and um, at this point, and then eventually it will move into the phase of um, project implementation and, um, you know, applying for funding and all that fun stuff that folks like Sean and Connor get to do. <laughs> um, and then the other group that I oversee, the Vail team, that group has been, has really struggled um, through the pandemic. Um, we've got a lot of, we also have a lot of different partners who are interested in engaging in that group. Um, but there's also a lot of conflict between the partners, um, especially between the nonprofit organizations and the BLM and the private landowners. Um, just because of the history, there's a there's quite an extensive history of litigation in that area, and so when the pandemic hit, that really crippled our ability to do collaboration. Um, I tried hosting a couple of Zoom meetings, and I wouldn't recommend it if you don't have a group of folks who are you know like eager and ready to work with each other. Um, so that I feel like. Um, the Vail team has been a, a lesson in trial and error for me for the last year. And um, now that things are starting to open up again, we're finally able to meet in person. And so I'm really excited because next week we're, um, I, I worked with the Department of State Lands and the one of the tribes, the local tribes, um, and then ODFW and BLM um, to put together a field tour. And we're going to go check out um, a fire that happened last uh, August, just um, about an hour from where I am here. And it's just right off the highway. But all of those partners after after the fire have kind of worked together to do some um, herbicide treatment for invasive annual grasses and reseeding and then also um, putting in new fences. Um, and they use all sorts of different funding sources. But then we've also got situations out there where 
um, funding was requested but not received, mostly because um, the funds, the ERS funds um, from BLM just weren't available for whatever reason. So I think it'll be a really great opportunity to get folks out on the ground together, just kind of interacting in a more organic way, um, and then kind of having some shared learning opportunities and also discussing um, ways that this collaborative group might be able to provide assistance in the future. Um, so use this as an example um, to discuss like how this LIT might have been able to acquire additional funds that were requested um, or resources or whatever. So I think that's going to be really exciting. I'm a little bit nervous because um, so far, I think I have about 45 people who want to come, and I'm mostly nervous about the parking situation. So um, I think it'll be it'll it'll be interesting. It'll be fun and crazy, and you know, a little bit chaotic. But I'm I think it'll be a really valuable next step for that group. So um, yeah, I think that's about all I have. Thanks, Julie. I mean. Julie is really uh, becoming like a partnership facilitator slash conflict resolution extraordinaire. So, I mean, you know, several of you have to deal with that type of stuff. Catlin, I mean, she's right there with you. So for those of you that might have to be entering into some of these like less comfortable situations in the future, just, you know, know that some of your team members here have extensive <laughs> experience, Brenda too, um, Amy. So just know that you guys can lean on each other. Julie's actually called some of uh, your guys' uh, team members here just to kind of touch base on some things. So lean on each other as yeah, much I'm, as you can. Let's, I'm a big proponent oh, of sorry, go ahead, like Julie. Talking talking things out and venting venting through things. So <laughs> I feel like it's very valuable. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Good work. All right, let's travel. Let's see. Let's travel over to Idaho. And Brenda, what's going on over there? Okay, well, thanks. And I guess I forgot to let everybody know that um, I'm based out of Reynolds Creek, Idaho, um, Murphy, Idaho, in Owyhee County. So, and uh, cover as the little shape map showed, we go, um, you know, up a ways like into the Salmon Chalice area and then, and then cover the bottom part of Idaho and also partner, uh, talk with Caitlin and the Roger group and some others. So anyway, um, so my position, um, Julie, I, I, I totally hear what you're saying because I was brought on um, as the coordinator for the Idaho Rangeland Conservation Partnership. And it came out of uh, something we've been working on here in Idaho for a long time, which we talked about as all hands, all lands, which are directors from BLM, Fish and Wildlife Service, Department of Lands, um, a number um, of, of those agencies. Uh, all signed off on trying to work on uh, landscape scale, cross cross ownership boundary um, solutions. Uh, you know, um, both are from the social, ecological, and uh, economical aspect. And so, the benefit that we have um, for the conservation partnership, and with me as coordinator, is we are not um, we're not agency driven. We don't lobby for policy. Um, we bring in a very diverse, we've had uh, two annual meetings that have brought in very diverse stakeholders for the rangeland issues and been able to have um, what we're terming a safe space to have some really good conversations about some of the tough issues. And Julie, some of this is, um, last year we had a real good conversation about um, access and conflict private property, state lands, you know, public land access. And so out of that, we have a, a recreation access working group. Um, that was our January 2020 meeting. And then um, um, the world was tipped on its ear with COVID. And so we've had some really interesting things. Uh, we, we developed a working group right after that to talk about um, cross education, and that's one of the things um, that I think is really important in bringing these partners together and rangeland stakeholders, and especially, um, you know, with our agencies and our rural communities for the economic reliance that they have on them is keeping those landscapes 
healthy, resilient, and open, and how recreation, how it affects the wildlife, affects the um, ecological aspect, affects um, land ownership, management, whether it's uh, federal land, private land, or state lands. And so then COVID hit, um, then the gate was opened and everybody, literally, no pun intended, but everybody and their dog and their bicycle and their ATV and um, started hitting uh, the outdoors last March and April. And so it, it was really, um, you know, it's just one of those things you can never predict, but it was very timely. And so we've been, one of my jobs has been to help bring those groups together and uh, facilitate conversation as we move forward. And again, um, the benefit that we have, that I have as coordinator is we can identify some of those obstacles and barriers and then help find common ground solutions to work forward where we need some educational aspect, um, helping different stakeholders on the ground understand it. So that's kind of the recreation aspect. And I've talked to a number of people in, in the land management agencies, BLM, the state land um, forest service and recreation um, is becoming something that we're needing to talk about you know, there's consumptive uses such as grazing, mining, hunting, fishing, but recreation is now kind of getting into that consumptive use when we're looking at land planning. We, we need to um, make sure that we don't, you know, that it's that we've got some management and um, have some cross education and understanding. So that's taken up um, those the time. It's been very beneficial. In April, we, uh, IRCP, we hosted a, our first little informational webinar sharing on recreation and brought in um, the Twin Falls County Sheriff from down um, around the South Hills area. Um, and, the, and they work very closely with BLM. Um, so I talked to Mike Courtney and um, Ken Crane down there. And so we were able to talk about some of, some of the things that they're seeing and how, how people can help on that. We talked to John Kurtz with the BLM up in our, our uh, Shoshone field office, the Haley Ketchum area. Um, there's, that's, as many of you know, Sun Valley is a major tourist attraction for Idaho. Um, there's migration corridors there. Um, there's a lot of moving parts there. So we're, we're um, trying to see how we can help with BLM and those conversations. And, and move forward on that. So that was, and then we talked to um, uh, the Idaho Parks and Recs, uh, Boise Cities Division. Uh, we have ridges, ridges to rivers here, a trail system outside of Boise that is on public land and goes through some private land with some easements. And also uh, we have uh, sheep grazing that goes through there, uh, the trailing of the sheep goes through. Um, we've got migration corridors, um, wildlife, different things there. So that's been one of the main things um, that we're continuing to work on. Along with uh, my, my role is to help facilitate those conversations a lot of times between landowners and agencies. Um, uh, sometimes it's on permit renewal questions. Um, I've worked extensively on our soda fire targeted grazing to help liaison between the county commissioners, the BLM program, um, and the permittees, uh, and then get information out. Uh, that's been a real successful program on fuel load reduction, although due to lack of water this year, um, we haven't really had targeted grazing. So, But that, that's another thing that is a continuation um, that I work on. Uh, we have a, a really good working group here uh, for the Cheatgrass Challenge. Um, that's the catchy name, but it addresses Medusa Head, Betonada, and Cheatgrass. And I've been um, on the planning team with that and working as we move forward and get some projects identified. Um, Sean, it was exciting to hear you talk about that high density um, uh, you know, mapping because we the pro one of the projects that went through there last year, covered 45,000 acres, and they were able to do it in a matter of six hours, um, you know, and they're getting the data lined out. So 
as, as that cheatgrass challenge and, and being able to identify target areas to address and work with. Um, that's one of the things we wanna work across land ownership boundaries. And my role as a coordinator has been to liaison that between landowners, bringing them to the table, helping them understand what the potential is there, along with NRCS, um, BLM, um, our partners that, that are working on that. Um, as Tina indicated, another conversation from my, I operate under a steering committee. Um, and one of the, the next webinar that we are gonna be having next um, on May 19th is gonna talk about 3030 conversations. And uh, Nada Culver is gonna be on there just giving a high level um, agency perspective. Um, we all know that this is rolling out and there's, I, I'm looking at this as there's opportunity to bring grassroots and local community involvement on things that are already on the ground that maybe are not quantified. Um, many of our, our landowners and our stakeholders um, participate in best management practices or conservation that may not be quantified under a federal program. And we're working to figure out, uh, having conversations about how, how to talk about that. And Mariah, one of them, um, the other panelists, we've got a, a public lands perspective um, to talk about you know, the benefits that public lands provide for healthy ecosystems, um, biodiversity, uh, resilience, and then um, private land, land owners and how, how to help quantify some of those things that are going on the ground and be, be a part of those conversations as this is fleshed out. So, and again, one of the main things we're finding that is beneficial um, in talking, I, I present to the BLM leadership um, and in working with a couple of the, the different area managers on helping them um, get some conversations um, on things like uh, helping other people understand rangeland health assessments in the permitting process and, and how other monitoring comes into that. Um, and cross education on, on rangeland stakeholders so that they understand the benefits that um, you know, these communities and the people on the land and these projects offer to open space and wildlife and healthy ecosystems. So um, that's- Thanks, Brenda. You yeah, got a lot going on. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you so much. So let's stay in Idaho. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, I'm gonna apologize ahead of time. I have to jump off um, and get my thoughts wrapped around the, the 3030 comments. 30 so, 30. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for representing. Good luck there, you'll do great. All right, let's stay in Idaho and let's venture over um, and see what Connor has going on. So Connor, I'm gonna probably limit you to five minutes so I can make sure everybody goes. <laughs> yeah, no worries. All right, Connor, let's see what you got going on. Um, no, it's been great stuff. Right, yeah, annual grasses and mesic and, you know, access, that's all. I'm sure we could have like an hour long discussion on each one of those. Um, but yeah, Sean, back to your comment about non-federal match, like that's always, yeah. I am always also thinking about that because um, as PF down here on Bosch, we're holding a gigantic, like it's almost, well, they're going to modify it and it's going to be dang near a half million dollar NIFWF grant. Um, and luckily, you know, all the Idaho partners, we've got enough match to, to meet that and still be basically at a one-to-one, -one. but yeah, that's always uh, usually on my mind. Um, don't know if I've got any great ideas for you, but yeah, I feel, I feel you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for commiserating. Yeah, that's right. And then my position, I guess, is more project-based for the moment. I, now that I've been here, I've started in July, I guess. Um, and it's, ju yeah, just a gigantic juniper removal project in southwest Idaho. Um, but now that I've been here a little while and seen, you know, a little more of the landscape, like I think the position has the potential to evolve through time. Like I don't think it's going to be tied just to this project type of a thing because there's just an unlimited amount of stuff you could do out there between Aspen restoration, mesic work for just as much as you could possibly do. Um, 
just a really cool, really cool landscape, but we're focusing on the juniper removal. Um, I'm going to be presenting later today after um, I think Eric's presentation uh, with some stuff on wrap, how we're tying in, how I'm starting to tie in wrap into some of our juniper removal stuff. Um, but yeah, I guess recent, recent events, a few grants here, there, one last week, um, one next week, which is uh, like for the BLM wildlife program. So that one's fairly, that'll be my next few days. Um, because the really the big issue we've had, like, you know, we had a plan for Bosch, 40,000 acres, 42,000 acres that we wanted to do this year. And the money didn't show up, you know, cost estimates were like, well, we need a million dollars to a million five to do what we want to do. And they originally gave us 150,000 and then they ran the budget numbers and then they took that, took that back. So it just, it just is what it is. You know, some years are good. Some years are, are not so great. And that's what this year is shaping up to be that we're going to get more acres done through our NIFWF grant than through any BLM dollars. So we're teed up and ready to go for, I guess, when it pendulum swings the other direction. But yeah, I guess I'll let other people go since you guys will be hearing more from me uh, later this afternoon. Connor, did you really want to quickly just tell this group, like at your 30,000 foot level, um, about your uh, IDIQ effort really quick? Um, so that they know what you're talking about this afternoon? I mean, you can just give like a quick explanation of what you did with that. Um, yeah, basically tying uh, Juniper cover classes to um, a IDIQ indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity contract for five years. Um, so then all I have to do is go run a GIS analysis and I already got the prices out for five years so I can, it, it'll help with planning, um, planning efforts on knowing how much stuff's going to cost instead of estimating how much stuff's going to cost. Perfect. So, I'll go into so Connor, I'll talk more about that. And if you have further questions, he is just the master at this type of stuff. So pick his brain. All right, let's see, who should we go for? Let's see, let's stay in, let's get, let's just get Idaho out of the way because they got lots going on. <laughs> Samantha, what do you got going on? Yeah, so I am still trying to learn the job. I've only been here six months. Um, <laughs> so I'm trying to pick off where Connor <laughs> left off. Um, but so far it's been great. Been doing a lot of um, juniper mastication in the area. That's what I walked into when I started the job um, on a recent burn out here, finished that up um, and then did some seeding in those areas as well. And now I'm just working on some agreements and mods with the BLM and the Forest Service for work that'll be coming up later this year, um, which will also just mainly be um, juniper maintenance and, you know, keeping uh, juniper encroachment. Um, yeah, had a couple grants put in. We'll see where those go. And then I think the big project that I'm kind of really excited to be working with right now is I worked with the Forest Service and we just submitted a proposal for the Cheatgrass Challenge. Um, and we are trying to put together a project with a brand new herbicide called Rejuvra. And I don't know if any of you have heard of it. Um, the Forest Service just got approved to use it. And so we're putting together a project with the Forest Service, BLM, state lands, and private lands to treat cheat grass um, out in a in the Badger Fire Cave Canyon burn area. Um, and we've actually managed to wrap the whole project up with USGS and we're trying to get it turned into sort of a research project so we can take that data to a larger scale. So hopefully other land managers across the US can we can kind of take that data and it can be applied to other areas. Um, so we're kind of a, a pilot program here with this Rejuvra. Um, so I think that'll be a super exciting um, project. It's a, right now it's a three year project with the, um, an opportunity to expand into the future. Um, and then, yeah, we're just doing juniper maintenance and then some sagebrush planting later this year, so. Wow. Oh. Thanks, Samantha. Make sure you keep us updated on the whole Rejuvra um, effort. Hopefully you guys get funded for that. I know we have 
Um, lots of landowners kind of scattered across the West and some even on our JV board that would be very interested in how that goes and plays out. So keep us posted. Yes, definitely. Awesome. Well, let's venture just a little bit further and go see um, Ben over there in Utah. So Ben, what's, what's going on? Woohoo, I'm in Utah, uh, but just barely in Utah. <laughs> Barely. All of you know where Rich County is. Uh, we are right on the border of Utah and Wyoming. In fact, I've grown up in this area my whole life and we run cows and I bought sheep about five years ago. And uh, with my cow operation, I can be in Utah, Wyoming and Idaho all in the same day with my cows. Our headquarters is in Rich County for the winter time where we feed them, but in the spring we move them to Wyoming to a place I own over there that's only 13 miles from my place in Utah. And then we're 50 miles up to Idaho where we run on the forest service in the summertime. So kind of a close area, but my job with the uh, Rich County Soil Conservation District, IWJV and NRCS is to focus on the Bear River Upper Bear River watershed area is what my understanding is. And uh, we've just came up with a plan this spring. Taylor and I were uh, talking about it in the office one day. Taylor Payne works in there with the uh, Gip and the uh, sage grouse too. And uh, this year is one of the driest years we have seen in Rich County. Uh, water, there just wasn't much snowpack this winter. And the Woodruff Narrows Reservoir, which is what most of the ranchers in the valley rely on for flood irrigation through the summer. A few of them will pump pivots, you know, out of that or out of the, out of the groundwater. But uh, the majority of all the ranchers that, that are in this area flood irrigate out of, out of when they store their water in the Woodruff Narrows Reservoir. And uh, this year at our Woodruff Narrows meeting two weeks ago, we had uh, half the amount of storage that we would need. We were looking at about eight days of flood irrigation from the reservoir water and uh, so we've put off turning the reservoir water in. In fact Emily Downing emailed me she's coming through through tomorrow and wants to take some pictures of some flood irrigated fields and I was like most years we could do that uh, right now I think I know two guys that are flood irrigating as we speak and uh, so we're taking this opportunity to use some state funds we're going to try to look at some state funds I was just with uh, Brandon Todd the NRCS our district conservationist we're going to see if he can do a specific funding pool with the state and uh, see if we can come up with a way because there's a there's a, right now there's a water efficiency grant money coming from the state of Utah that's available and there's also in 2022 the water quality grant money for the 319 is going to be coming down through the state of Utah so we're going to see if we can use this opportunity to get a lot of the ranchers on board with perhaps, uh, because what we were looking at this last winter at, as I was at the reservoir meeting, there was one canal company that used 11,000 acre feet of water for stock water throughout the winter. And uh, we got doing the math on the amount of cows. We had an NRCS engineer in the office. Really the amount of cows in Rich County could, could drink maybe an acre foot of water a day. And that could come out of wells that we could possibly drill, you know, on because there, there are just a few ranchers that don't have access to the river and those are the ones that use that amount of water to try to push water down their canal through the winter. So what I'm going to be doing is coordinating over the next little bit, trying to get a hold of, there's about 10 different canal companies and presidents. I've got to get on with the private landowners and the presidents and see which landowners, if we were to able to get some funding to help them drill a livestock well, and that could create stock water you know, through the winter time, then we could have stored, we could have stored that 11,000 acre feet in the reservoir and we could be using that for a longer period of flood irrigation. And that would also help the habitat for the, a lot of the waterfowl and the birds that come in in the spring and, and want to use this area for their habitat. And this year it's looking like it's gonna be quite short. So that's a project that we're just getting started and we're just in the beginning phases, just kind of found out that we should maybe try to go for it. and. We've got Brandon at the NRCS on board with seeing if we can, if we can get some funding 
set aside from the state because we're, the challenge I noticed with some of our NRCS projects I worked on this spring was, especially in Rich County uh, with the NRCS rankings, they won't go from flood to flood. You know, they won't, your, your improvements on flood irrigation won't rank against a flood to a pivot because the NRCS likes to see that efficiency uh, go, go up and so, but in our area, we, a lot of the guys can't go to pivot just the way that the ground is and the way that it works. And so we had two or three different irrigation projects that got turned down because they didn't have any funding that was set aside specifically specifically for flood flood type uh, programs. So that's our, our goal is to see if we can get a specific funding pool from the state of Utah that would focus on flood irrigation for a couple of years to be able to improve this, this area. So just looking forward tomorrow to, I guess I'll meet Emily and maybe see if we can find a couple of picture places for her on the river. Uh, the river runs through my property. There's a couple of different dams where guys divert water for their canals. Might take her down there and show that, show her that and just see if we can find some spots to get some stuff for water for. Awesome, thanks Ben. So just so to kind of like connect this group, right? So uh, the water for initiative, sister initiative with Sagebrush initiative under IWJV, but Water 4 has about five focal areas across the West. Um, and so one of those focal areas is the Bear River watershed. And so those are just important for migratory um, and waterfowl birds, as well as um, kind of holding up where there is importance for the ag, ag community to continue to um, irrigate via open ditches and flood irrigation to kind of sustain those um, wet meadow areas that are so important for these um, flyaways. So, all right, um, let's see, let's venture over to, since we're already on the Wyoming, Utah line, let's venture over to Jason's area, see what Jason has going on. Yeah, so I'm in Lander. Um, like I said, I just started this position a little under a year ago. Um, Unfortunately, well, fortunately, unfortunately, uh, we've only had like one planter and two offices when I got here. So a lot of the low lying fruit. Um, so working with NRCS cost share and financial assistance programs is irrigation projects. So not a huge impact on, on sagebrush ecosystem uh, directly so far. Uh, but of course, managing water as far as transferring from flood irrigation to pivots and things like that. Um, pretty helpful down the road, excuse me, down the road. Um, but still, like we all know, with some of the um, government cost share programs and whatnot, a lot of documentation and, and paperwork. So I've been able to learn all those steps. Um, so hopefully this year I can go out and get some applications for some range contracts, um, kind of leading the SGI effort. Um, and Mandy, that SGI, that you kind of initiated there and got rolling. Um, we were getting close this year and there's some other roadblocks like there always seem to be. So there's like a 19,000 acre SGI that Mandy started working on and did a lot of the leg work and, and whatnot. Um, and some of you may be more familiar with this than I am, but it sounds like BLM has a new um, kind of comment period for range and grazing um, type contracts. Um, has to go through like an SGI or a sage grouse and then mining exploration type review as well under this new administration. So I think that might be a different um, process. So BLM was working on that. So there's still hope that we can get that to go through this year. Um, but that's been on the books for, for a number of years. So hopefully soon we can get that one through. Um, other than that, uh, we've had some... Uh, a second sign up for our CPPs, um, equip projects as well. So some riparian fencing and some tree establishment and riparian areas. So I have a couple contracts lined up for that um, that we're getting, getting ready to, to push through and hopefully get obligated here soon. And then just been helping out uh, both the Lander and Riverton offices, um, get all those, those contracts for equip um, pushed through this year. So like I mentioned, a lot of irrigation contracts and whatnot, um, but all the processes would be helpful uh, in the future here when I get ready to sign up some, uh, hopefully some range range contracts coming this coming year. So um, that's kind of the, the gist of what I've been doing. I was uh, doing some let counts this morning. So like I think Amy said, um, 
a lot of a lot of early mornings there starting early and I was up and at it at four o'clock this morning so hopefully the last last counts for me this year um but it's always fun to get outside uh, like I said this time of year with with contracts and writing and, and development and stuff it's a lot of screen time so it's always nice to nice to get outside and do that yeah so that's about all I have great thanks Jason I'll be curious to see what you saw on your let counts so I will touch base with you later on that all right let's see we have four folks left um we have about eight minutes left so I just want to just do a time check if it's okay we'll probably just go over about five uh five minutes five seven minutes um if you need to go feel free to uh, but we have four folks left and i'm um we'll let those four go next time first so don't feel time crunched but just know um that we have about uh that we're almost up against our time so let's see let's go to um catlin let's go down to nevada what's going on in nevada sure why with not the roger group um so yeah, so like I said, I am with the Roger group. Um, right now, I think one of the biggest things that the group is struggling with um, is probably just not being able to be in person. We're all a pretty, pretty close group. And um, I think that this has really taken a toll on a lot of the personal relationships that have been built. Um, so we've been trying to navigate that. Hopefully, hopefully the fall meeting this year, we can all get together. Um, we had to cancel our summer tour just with fire concerns and not sure with pandemic standing. So that was kind of a bummer, but hopefully by October, we can all get together. Um, right now, um, the group's kind of rallying around the Wine Cup Gamble Ranch and everything that's happening there with outcome-based grazing project. Um, so we'll see where that goes. Um, I think right now there's, we are a rancher led group. So there's a lot of rancher specific concerns that get brought up. Um, and so just kind of focusing on those under the new administration and where we're going with that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much where we're at with that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Mandy, if I'm missing anything, <laughs> let me know. Catlin is, um, she has a huge task under her, right? Like the Roger group has what Catlin, 40 to 50 partners. So she wrangles all these people to talk about these really tough collaborative issues. Um, she's actually working with Hannah and I on writing a kind of a feature article to hold up um, Roger group, the Wine Cup Gamble Ranch and the outcome-based grazing. So. Catlin has a definite key for um, communications and writing stuff. So watch for that. Uh, that'll probably be posting hopefully by um, here in the next few weeks. We've got a rough draft and we are working through that. So thanks, Catlin. Uh, let's see, let's go to Kathy. We haven't heard from New Mexico. What's going on? Okay, well, um, I'm still learning since I've been on since January. I'm trying to contact all of the partners, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, BLM, state land, uh, ranchers. Uh, Chama has a Chama Peak Alliance, which is a group of ranchers that have put together. So they would have a, would have a voice at the table for game and fish as well as other um, projects. So I'm trying to get a hold of everybody there, trying to figure out what projects they're already working on, what priorities they'd like to see, what they'd like to see in the future. Basically, I'm trying to figure out what parts of the puzzle aren't there and trying to figure out how to find them the pieces they need. So I'm still learning. And parts of it that are fairly difficult for me is so my background is I'm a retired game and fish from New Mexico and so I know how it sh how it did work but it's no longer working that way now and so I'm finding that um, the federal agencies aren't working as closely as they did when I was in uniform. So it, it's it's trying to figure out a pathway to get them to share what they need to share to get things accomplished. 
Does that make sense? Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm yeah. doing. Well, just know, Kathy, I know you're the newest team member, uh, but you know, lots of these folks kind of had to start in that same arena. So now you kind of know, and you've seen everybody's faces. Um, feel free to cold call any of these folks at any time. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. If anybody has any advice for Kathy, please reach out to Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's got a lot I, going on. Now. At this point, I would really appreciate it. So, if you have anything that I can read or I can look at, or you just call me, I would really appreciate it. Thanks, Kathy. Sure. All right. Let's see. We got uh, Caitlin and Janine left. So let's go to let's go from New Mexico across to Arizona. Caitlin, you got lots going on too down there. Did I lose Caitlin? Oh, there she is. I'm here. I'm here. Um, yeah, <laughs> lots going on, and it's hard to keep it all straight. Um, I let's see, what have I been doing? Um, I embedded with the BLM about a year ago, almost a year, like uh, 11 months, and I was supposed to focus on the Mule Deer Corridor um, there, and it has taken me until about two months ago to actually get project in on the corridor. Um, difference being that now that we're doing a project, we're writing a plan for all of it. Um, so it's a pretty big project that we're working on, uh, picking out habitat, polygons, and that sort of thing, and hopefully um, spreading it out over a couple of years and also putting in some fire breaks to protect the habitat since 90,000 acres of the corridor burned last year and it's a tinderbox right now. So we're trying to protect it from burning so we can manage it the way we want to instead of kind of going back and trying to save what we can. Um, I work exclusively on the on BLM land for the most part, but I uh, work with the Game and Fish and try to help the BLM and the Game and Fish Department speak to each other. Um, like Kathy was saying, they don't always talk when they should. <laughs> Um, so anyway, and we're working on um, putting in some wildlife waters and fences and stuff like that. I'm working on that. I'm working on developing a research project in the corridor, hopefully eventually seeking funding for callers to monitor their movements, especially since so much fire has gone down in the corridor in the last 10 years. Um, and then, oh, I just, uh, helped the, the BLM write a, an AIM design for monitoring vegetation for their whole district. Um, and that's kind of taking off and I'll be involved in that too. So I'm doing some other things, but those are the big stuff that I've been doing. So, And I have to get off to go to another meeting. So good to see you. Thanks, Caitlin. Caitlin also just, um, just so you all know, kind of just how, for the new folks, just how diverse these positions are. The BLM actually asked uh, Caitlin to serve as, um, as the lead for their vegetation management uh, partnership. So they had like, right, the BLM was um, the lead for that. And so just know that if BLM uh, needs you guys to step up to be the lead on something that you're very much capable, you know, you can do that. Cause she was, I think, acting in it for probably two or three three months while it was vacant. Okay, I think last but not least, Janine. <laughs> We're excited to hear what you got going on. Yeah, so um, so I'm the Buffalo Skedaddle Sage Grouse Working Group Coordinator here in Susanville, California, Northeast California. And <clears throat> um, this working group um, has been established for um, quite a few years, um, but, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. They really needed somebody to, to kind of be in the position to um, really just focus on, on sage grouse projects. Um, so there's a lot of partners involved with the working group, um, BLM being the, the major player, but also um, a bunch of private landowners, um, um, California Fish and Game and um, some nonprofits, um, et cetera. So um, my... Um, main project for this winter was um, updating the conservation strategy for the Buffalo Skedaddle um, 
population management unit. Um, and so the Buffalo Skedaddle Group has kind of been working on updating this um, conservation strategy um, that hasn't been updated since 2006. Um, and they've kind of been working on it bits and pieces for the past several years. So um, chipping away at it, but um, the subcommittee that was working on it was pretty excited <laughs> when I was hired. So they just kind of handed it to me. And um, so I came on, took it over and am finishing it up hopefully, or at least it's in a state now that it can be kind of used to prioritize projects and um, used to help us kind of create a master list of, of what needs to get done. So um, yeah, I've been meeting with landowners and trying to figure out um, how they can use uh, what NRCS money they have left from this farm bill to um, get sage grouse related projects done. Um, largely those are juniper related, juniper control projects. Um, there's a few riparian restoration projects in the mix um, on BLM and um, BLM has been trying to acquire some private um, parcels that are pretty prime um, areas for many natural resources, um, but trying to figure out what we can do with NRCS money on those parcels before they um, BLM buys them. We have a little bit of a challenge with ARC clearances um, and trying to get projects done. So um, I've been trying to work with BLM to see how we can get around some of those obstacles. Um, but there's been a change in management. So it's kind of, we've got a little bit of a lag period here, but um, I think this summer we can get a bunch of stuff done and, and kind of plan for next summer. So I'm, I'm optimistic about that. And yeah, with this new conservation strategy, I think it'll be a good kind of um, place to start and um, a, a way to steer us in the right direction for, for future projects. So, yeah. Thanks, Janine. Yeah, you guys have a lot on your plate after you get that um, complete. <laughs> a lot of projects will probably start popping up. All right, so thank you all for sharing. Um, it's just very interesting. Tina and I love to hear, uh, I mean, we touch base with you guys quite a bit, but we just love to hear again from you all what you got going on, um, kind of helps open some doors and share, you know, with everybody on this call. Um, maybe people are working on the same things or having the same struggles. So just very much appreciate you guys being uh, willing and able to share what you got going on and spending the time with us. So we hope to be in person, like I said, uh, later this year. Uh, okay, so with that, um, this will conclude our team call for today. We will then jump back on um, at 1230 Mountain uh, to hear an in-depth discussion on the RAP um, tool, and we'll hear from Eric, and then we'll hear from Connor. So uh, any last-minute items that I did not cover from anyone? Hearing none, everybody's hungry and ready to go to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy, I, all right well it's great seeing everybody's faces yeah go ahead john no, i was just going to say with a lot of new faces on here and um some of us have been on a little longer and like you mentioned maybe face some of the same struggles engaging with partners i know uh for me it's been crucial to have one or two key partners maybe in uh, leadership type roles with various agencies just kind of one-on-one -on -one talk to them and ask you know how can i fit in or how can i help um because it when you're new it's really wide open and i think uh i'm still struggling with this it's easy to say yes to everything and uh and then you're scattered and you don't feel like you're prioritizing what you're doing and if it's useful you maybe you're not focusing right. on the right things and i think i would just be cautious of saying yes to everything and trying to be strategic and and what you focus your uh, your efforts on and and i think finding those key uh, mentors or or partners that are willing to uh sit down and and talk about where you could fit in and help out the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great advice, Sean. Thanks. Yep. I do find myself also saying yes to a lot of things <laughs> and I have to be careful too. 
I have to start saying no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shoot. Um, yeah, thank you for that. I, yeah, feel free to reach out to um, each other throughout this whole process. We just really want you guys to, um, yeah, lean on each other as a team. I mean, several like Jason and Samantha, you guys have, you know, the Sage, um, Sage Gas Initiative team as well, but just really, uh, you know, use both. Uh, this one's a little bit smaller, so we can um, have a little bit more of those in-depth conversations if you need. I think I uh, just wanted to mention that we do have two other team members, um, Kaylee Garn from Tremont in Utah. She was unable to attend today. And then Kelly DeBricio, uh, she's in Ely, Nevada, and she was actually out on a uh, juniper cut this morning with the contractor so she could not attend but just know for those of you that haven't met everybody there are two other team members so um yeah we will uh hopefully have them be able to join next time so all right with that you guys go have lunch we will see you back here um in an hour for the wrap presentation thanks guys <laughs>